Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and how do you do? Welcome to this week's virtual story time with me, Miss Kayla. So it's still me with my felt board and my stories, but I'm in a different location now. So the Clarence Rockland Public Library is now back open. So I've been moved from the kids section to allow you guys to go browse the books. And I've been relocated here, which I don't know about. We'll see how this video turns out, but I feel like it's very loud. So maybe be good or not good for the video. We will see. Um, so today's theme is all about colors. So when I had the idea to do a whole story time about colors, um, I was really basing myself off of my felt board because I've been wanting to do it for a while. And I was a little worried about which books I would read. And then when I browsed through, I found really, really great books. I was actually quite surprised at how many good books there are on colors. So I have three books, a felt board, a little song as per usual. So let's get going. So my first book is a classic, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by Bill Martin Jr. Jr. and then illustrated by Eric Carl. And it was published by Henry Holt and Company. So, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Let's go. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Children, children, what do you see? We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. The end. So as I previously mentioned, I've been wanting to do this felt board for a while. It's called Mouse Paint. And it's originally based off of a book by Ellen Stoll Walsh. I believe it's a bit of an older book. So I think I saw it in school when I was young. Um, so yeah, so I've turned it into a felt board. So this story is about three white mice. So three white mice were on a white sheet of paper and the cat couldn't find them. One day they found three jars of paint. A red one, a yellow one, and a blue one. The mice thought it was mouse paint. So they were so excited 
that they jumped right in. And then there was a red mouse, a yellow mouse, and a blue mouse. And they dripped puddles all over. A red puddle, a yellow puddle, and you guessed it, a blue puddle. The red mouse decided to jump into the yellow puddle. So with his red feet, he splashed and he danced all over the yellow until it became orange, said the mice. The yellow mouse decided that he was going to go play in the blue puddle. He was so excited, kicking his feet. And then he noticed that his yellow feet in the blue puddle made green, said the mice. Well, now the blue mouse had to go into the red puddle to see what would happen. So with his blue feet, he danced around in the red puddle and all of a sudden they noticed that the puddle was turning purple, said the mice. Oh, what fun to play in mouse paint. But then they got all sticky and the paint was starting to dry up and it wasn't very comfortable. So the mice decided that they would go wash off in the cat's water bowl. So the blue and purple mouse and the yellow mouse with the orange feet and the yellow mouse with the green feet jumped into the water bowl. And then they all came out nice and sparkly white again. This time they decided that they would paint the paper instead. So they painted one part red one part yellow and one part blue. And then they mixed some red and yellow and painted one part orange. Then they mixed some blue and yellow and painted one part green. And then finally they mixed some red and blue and painted the last little part purple but they decided to keep some white, just in case, for the cat. And that's the story about mouse paint. So for my next book, I have Sky Color. And this was written by Peter H. Reynolds and published by Candlewick Press. So sky color. Marisol was an artist. She loved to draw and paint and she even had her very own art gallery. Not all her art hung in the gallery. Much of it she shared with the world. She painted posters to share ideas she believed in at school, Marisol was famous for her creative clothes, her box of art supplies, and her belief that everybody was an artist. Yes, Marisol was an artist through and through. So when her teacher told the class they were going to paint a mural for the library, Marisol couldn't wait to begin. The classroom buzzed with the sound of brainstorming. The students talked and sketched. 
Together they made a great big drawing. Then they marched to the library. I'll paint a fish. I'll paint one too. I'll paint the ocean. Marisol shouted, I'll paint the sky. Marisol rummaged through the box of paint but could not find any blue. How am I going to make the sky without blue paint? The bell rang. It was time to put their brushes down for the day. As she climbed aboard the bus, Marisol kept wondering. All the way home, she stared out the window. The sun lowered closer to the horizon. Later at home, Marisol watched the day turn into night. That night, Marisol settled into a deep dream. She drifted through a sky swirling with colors. The colors mix making too many to count. In the morning, Marisol stood waiting for the bus in the rain. The sky was not blue. She smiled. At school, Marisol raced to the library. She grabbed a dish and began adding colors. This one, that one. She swirled the brush to make an altogether new color. Marisol then began painting on the wall. A boy asked, what color is that? That, Marisol said, that is sky color. The end. So for our crafts this week, we made little rainbows. I thought it was fitting, you know, colors. So we just cut a paper plate and then took out our colors for the rainbow. So I helped my sons by put some lines so that they could sort of follow the lines. And then we just glued on some cotton balls for clouds. And those are our little rainbows this week. So to go with this, I do have a little song. And it's the tune of Twinkle Twinkle, so Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and it's about the rainbow. So, red and orange, green and blue, shiny yellow, purple too. These are the colors that we know, way up high in the great rainbow. Red and orange, green and blue, Shiny yellow, purple too. So my last book is What's Your Favorite Color? And it was by Eric Carle. So he's the one who drew the images in Brown Bear, What Brown Bear, What Do You See? So obviously he loves color. And most of the books they does are just full of color. And what he decided to do with this book, which was kind of cool, is he went and asked all of his artist friends. So all sorts of illustrators, some of them have written books, uh, what their favorite color was and why. And then he turned it into a book. So let's see what they answered. For What's Your Favorite Color by Eric Carl and all of his friends. And this was published by Henry Holt and Company. So, Eric Carl said yellow. My favorite color is yellow. Why? One, most children paint a yellow sun in their pictures. Two, yellow for me is a very difficult color. When you mix yellow with any other color, it quickly becomes kind of muddy. If I use red and put it with another color, it stays red. And if I use blue and mix it with another color, 
it remains blue. But the minute that I put yellow into another color or mix another color into yellow, it becomes muddy. So it's a challenge for me and that's why yellow is my favorite color. Then he asked Brian Collier, blue is my favorite color. On rainy days, I call them blue days. I would buy a bunch of blue balloons for my daughter just to make her smile and brighten up the day. I know there will always be rainy days and my daughter still has the power to light up my world, but I still go out and buy balloons and bunches of blue. Mike Corretto said, my favorite color is mint because I love mint chocolate chip ice cream. William Lowe answered, brown is the color of my old neighborhood in the Bronx. I love to watch the buildings, the people, and the number six train weaving in and out of the afternoon sunlight. Etienne de la Salle answered, indigo. The Tureg nomads were long cotton indigo veils. They herd camels and goats and talked to the spirits of the Sahara Desert. Anna Dudney answered purple. When I was a little girl, my favorite outfit was my purple polyester pantsuit. And I wanted purple peacocks in the front yard. When I grew up, I got them. Rafael Lopez answered gray. The color I choose will surprise you because it dares to be different. No matter what others may say, artists know that gray is magic. It goes along well with all the other colors and knows how to make them sparkle. Gray is smart and unique. Like the clever octopus, my good friend gray knows how to change colors to communicate. It comes in many different shades from warm to really cool. In some parts of the world, this flexible color even changes its spelling to gray with an E. When things get noisy and mixed up, gray is like a calm, deep breath. Lauren Castillo said white. I love the way snow magically paints the world white. Philip C. Steed wrote green. A green frog is green, and sometimes socks are green, just like yarn. An alligator is green, unless it hides underwater, and then it's two white eyes. Green grass is green, and apples can be green. A tree is green, except when it's yellow, red, or nothing at all. You know what? A green elephant is green when it wants to be. And that's why today my favorite color is green. Yuhi Morales said Mexican pink. Fiery, intense, and alive is Mexican pink, the color of Bougainville flowers. I used to cut on my way to visit my grandmother when I was a child. Melissa Sweet said, Maine morning gray. Foggy morning gray makes other colors glimmer, even the gull's beak. Fran Preston Gannon wrote orange. I love flaming orange. 
It is the color of the tiger burning bright as it creeps through the grass of the jungle. Jill McElmurray wrote black. Sometimes I imagine a place called the Black Garden. It's my own private garden, lush with trees and flowers that are dark and velvety. It's quiet and cool, even on hot days. It's wild and mysterious, but feels safe. The Black Garden is where I go to get lost in my thoughts, dance around, have a good cry, sing a song, paint a picture, or maybe eat a slice of dark chocolate cake. The Black Garden is unpredictable. The Black Garden is the garden of me. Mac Martin wrote Crimson Red. Crimson Red is my favorite color because it is the color of the Crimson Rosella, a parrot found in southeastern Australia, where I live. And lastly, Uri Shulevitz said all colors. I don't have a favorite color. Why not? Because a single color may feel lonely and may want to be with the other colors. When all the colors get together, oh, what a colorful party they will have. These were all of the artists that were in the book. The end. So that's it for this week's story time all about colors. I'll see you again next week with a brand new theme. Bye everybody.